sometimes mother jasoda out of love she can bind up krishna and can chastise krishna even and she can be angry out of love narad rishi also out of love and affection he they get cause to nalkabar mani and he became very but blessing for him so we sometimes become angry swami ji used to become angry why because he is a foreteller like but abhi ke hone janne wala or no in the future he saying that the ocean of sin is there Person of suffering is there, and he is going to to take bath in that. Forever he will be there. So sometimes he becomes angry out of mercy. So I told all these things out of mercy. Be careful. Be careful. You know that if there is fire, and you put in. or ghee or any burning fuel it will grow up it never be subside so if you are lusty and you are going to enjoy all things sense gratification or oh, it, it will not stop until you are going to ruin to be ruined and to help so be careful this is not first time i told you Be careful. I never told that uh, you should not be grihast. I never told like this. <coughs> But I told that uh, oh, you can be grihast, like Pandavas, like Shivas Pandey, like all the associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Gopis, like others. Not changing like dogs and cats. Always changing your wife and all these things. Never, never. We don't like all these things. So I know that Bhakti Vedant Swami was Maharaj was also somewhat worried for this. So many um, kinds of things he used to come to him, and he was very upset. So I don't want to take this burden. Also, you should do yourself this thing and take help of Krishna consciousness too. I have come to give. This thing, not this, or sense gratification. I am not going to give anyone. Or you do, you should not hope these things for me. I am against this thing. But if you want to be, or in family life, no harm. But try to follow that this family life is only to serve Krishna and Radhika, not for your your sense gratification. Never, never. And the brahmacharis and sannyasis who are still sannyasis, oh, they should not walk towards that path. Very dangerous, very dangerous. And those who are grihastha, they should follow the rules and regulation of Vedic culture, and they should be happy. Because oh, there are our father and mothers of sannyasis and brahmacharis. Yeah. They, they support in so many ways. If I need anything. I will go to any couple. Oh, please help me! I will go to Buddha Prabhu. 
I may go to what? Uh, Ananda Manjari. I may go to Nirgan Prabhu to Rupa Manav. I am this very person. What name? Pushpadanta Prabhu. Oh, these are ideal beings. You should try to be. There are so many. So I want that they should be like this. Now come to me. We should go to Nishingare. The teachings of Nishingma. Oh, when uh, Prahlad Maharaj, in the age of five, very boldly he told that give up worldly oh, wealth. And being in a high class of association, chant and remember in their guidance. This is the most uh, what the best thing I've my teacher. At once he became very angry. How this boy became in the party of Vishnu? I don't want to hear the name of Vishnu. He is, has killed my elder brother. And he at once threw out him from his land and became very angry. Not to the boy, but to the teachers. O oh, teachers, O oh, Brahmins, you are Sunda and Amark. Sunda means like an uncontrolled bull. No? Passing away very uh, watery tool, stool. <laughs> and, and, and uncontrolled. No. So, he is like this. And Amarka, Amarka means, means where is the ark of lot person a light of sun? Where that light is not? Where that Krishna devotion light is not there? Or he is like Amarka. So both were representative of these things. Hmm? Or oh, uncontrolled passing stool's bowl and another darkness. So I told to them, oh, you are taking, oh, you are mm, Keeping, you are maintaining your life by me. I'm giving so much action to you for this and your father. And why you have told, uh, why you have taught of this little boy and you have made his uh, life a spoil? Why you did? I will punish at once. And they began to say, they told that, oh, my Lord, we are not guilty for this. We are not guilty. Why you are not guilty? Who taught he? Oh, Naisharga ki I am Badati Balo, I am. Naturally this boy is telling this thing. We are not taught this thing. And always I am guarding that any Vaishnava should not come here to teach anything. So, here, even Narada cannot come here, and any other devotee cannot come. But he is telling himself, we are not guilty. Then he turned over that boy. Why you have taught all these things? Huh? Why you have learned this? Then very humbly, all in he began to. Naishamati stavat urkramangrim. The oh, three is slok. Mati na Krishna parato satova. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. We are very attentive and try to follow. This very day. And if you are following, you can contain your lust and all things, your all difficulty may go at once and you'll be happy forever. So then, Hiranikashipu, he was questioning his boy, from where have you learned all of these things? Very politely and without any fear at all, Pulad Maharaj rec uh, replied to him, Matina Krishna Parato Satova 
nito vipadye te griha bratanam adan tagobi vishatam tamisham puna puna stavita chavananam Matena Krishna parato soto The natural attraction of the heart, Krishna consciousness, towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it cannot be awakened by one's own efforts. It cannot be awakened by the efforts of others or by any combination of the both. For those persons who being in this world, if anyone in this world is very seriously intent on enjoying in the materialistic conception of life, in the bodily conception of life, then for them, their Krishna consciousness cannot be awakened by any means at all. What is their destination? How are they conducting their life? Their senses are out of control. And because their senses are out of control, they're making very fast progress on the path to very darkest regions of hell. And what are they doing along the way? They madly engage in chewing the chewed. What does it mean? Oh, we can think that my father, my father's father, my father's father's father, and all of them for many generations, they all did the same thing. They tried to get a good education. They tried to earn money. They tried to have very nice family members and a good comfortable situation in this world. Every one of them tried to do this and tried to seek out happiness in this. But what did they find? Only more and more problems, frustration and disappointment. And as they are pursuing this path, they experience so many troubles coming from other living entities. So an example has been given. Once on the street, there was a bone. It was a completely dry bone. There was no taste inside at all. Totally dry. So one dog came there and thought, Oh, if I chew on this bone, it may be that I'll get some, I'll relish some flavor from this bone. So he came and he began to chew the bone. He was chewing and chewing and chewing, but no taste at all. At the same time, so many other dogs in the streets, they saw that dog and thought, Hey, what is he doing? He's relishing a bone. But we're not relishing a bone. We all should also relish that bone. So then they came to him. <coughs> <laughs> Starting at him, give me that bone. No, I won't give you the bone. So then he tried to run away. And five, six, seven, eight dogs, they're all running after him. One is biting his tail, one biting his leg, one biting his le ear, like this. And all are biting him. Why? Because they also want to taste that bone. Actually, in that bone, there's no taste, no flavor, nothing at all. But he won't let go. And then, oh, all of a sudden, he couldn't tolerate the pain anymore. So he let go of the bone. And the bone fell on the ground. Then another dog came and picked up that bone and took it in his mouth. And then all the other dogs, they started to bite him. So that first dog, he was sitting back and he was looking at them and he was thinking, taking his tail inside. <laughs> <laughs> With his tail between his legs. And he was watching. Now he was feeling much better actually because he'd let go of the bone. And you see how they were all fighting over nothing. Or fighting over nothing. So this is uh, our condition in this world. We are very eager for sense gratification. But from this sense gratification, we never find any happiness or satisfaction. Oh, we want to be happy by that bone. Show it. Your teeth will go away, <laughs> and then blood will come, and then you can relish that. <laughs> there is no test. No test. Hearing this, hearing the cups, Kashpur become out of race. Okay? Very furious. Very furious. Oh, my Guru Desukha Chaji Bogus, that I, you are saying like that, and in that category, my two, these, these sons of my Guru Dev, or like in that category, oh, we are all foolish and you are now Pandit. Oh, I will give a lesson to you. Then he began again to start. But then, hearing the angry words of his father, challenging him, oh, how did you become so learned? Are we like nothing? Then Prahlad Maharaj, he gave his answer. Now Pratandi just... no. Pratandi. Very, very strong. No fear at all. He told his father. 
Nati vidu swatagatim hi vishnu Durasaya ye bahir atamanina Andaya thanda rupani amanas Te pisa temtram purudham ne badha He said, in this world Durasaya ye bahir atamanina Those who have many material desires According to their vision, they see that the objects of this temporary world have some value. And they chase after them. But they don't know. This is not their real self-interest. This will not be the cause of auspiciousness in their life. Their suarta, their real self-interest, is the lotus feet of Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So those persons who don't realize this, that the service of the Supreme Lord is valuable. And the sense objects of this world have, have no value at all. Those persons, oh, they are like a blind, blind people. Completely blind. And they select for themselves a, a guru who is blind like them. And selecting a blind guru, then they follow that guru. And when the blind lead the blind, what happens? Oh, they all fall down into a ditch. In other words, those who are not dedicated to the Supreme Lord are bound very tightly by the ropes of fruitive activities in the endless chain of birth and death. And those who follow them also become very tightly bound in the endless chain of birth and death without any hope of ever being released from their very pitiable condition. So then, oh, how can this Krishna consciousness come about? Prahlad Maharaj said, Naisam matis ta vadaru kramangrim Sprisyatanata pagamo yatata Mahi asham spadarado bishekam Niskin chananam nani brita yavat The living beings in this world are covered by anatta, unwanted desires and ignorance. How will these unwanted desires go away? How will they become free from anatta and ignorance? Oh, there is only one way. Only one way. What is that? Until the jivas of this world, they surrender themselves unconditionally at the lotus feet of the mahat, pure devotee, liberated, transcendental, holy master, spiritual guru. Unless they surrender themselves unconditionally at the lotus feet of such a person, and pray for their mercy, hearing their instructions and carrying them out to the best of their ability in their life. This is the meaning. To smear the entire body with the dust of the lotus feet of a Vaishnav. That means to surrender unconditionally to him and follow his instructions completely. Until the jiva does this, then the anatas and ignorance in the heart, which are the cause of his eternal ruination, they will never ever disappear. Thank you. Hearing this, Hena Kaspo became more and more serious, huh? furious, very much furious. And he told that, oh, I know so many medicines. If anyone has some injury in his hand and it has been so much rotten, the doctor tells, advises, that it should be cut out, otherwise you will die. Then it should be cut out. Even whole hand, even leg, to survive you. So he is in Bans Kulanga. He is our diet. Nest is very pure. But I don't know how this bad fellow come in our dynasty. He will ruin our whole dynasty. Oh, I want that he should be at one skill. Oh, my generals, oh, you should hear, and at once you should kill him. I don't like a son like him. Oh, falling, to follow his orders, all the generals oh, tried to cut him or to do anything to kill him, but they could not. Mad elephant was told to oh, crush, but when elephant come and touched, at once he ran away very far away. He was taken to ocean and it was thrown in the ocean. But anyhow, anyone came, a very 
um, what black boy came tricking, and he, he took him in his lap and he uh, took him on the coast. Oh, it was thrown from the high peaks of mountains, but he also said that he was here. Oh, so many snakes were. Hmm. Oh, but he was okay. Even so much poisons were given. Oh, but he was just still alive. Oh, there was a sister of Hiranyakasu. She has any bone from anywhere that she will not oh, be burnt in fire. So she was called and Hiran Kaspir requested, Oh my dear sister, Oh you are very, my, very helpful, so take this boy in your laps and enter in fire so that he may die and you should come out. So did happily. Oh big fire was made there and when fire was on his full flame, Oh she took Prahlad Maharaj in her laps and entered and at once he was burnt and Prahlad came oh, very, very soon out. <coughs> Nothing was done. So he was trying, but anyhow he was not putting to death. Then he feared, oh, it may be that he will be the cause of my death. And he was now thinking what to do. In the meantime, the two Sandamark, the priests told him, that don't be worry. Our father is now anywhere. One to for austerity. Oh, in a few days, in a couple of days, he will return, and then we will tell all these things to him, and he will make some something that he will be controlled. So wait till, and we are taking him to school. Oh, they took him to again to school, and they were teaching him. But he was not hearing anything. What he has heard in the home of our mother from Northern Sea. He was always chanting, remembering Krishna. One day, the teachers told Prahlad, Oh, very you, you are intelligent. Hmm? Oh, in a job you are going for one, two hours outside, and in the meantime, you should be my neater and look after these boys, so that they should not fire themselves. When they went, in the meantime, the, all the children became independent, and they were going to play here and there, but strictly Prahlad Maharaj called them all. Oh, listen, I want to tell something to you. And then he began to speak something, and what was? Oh, you can speak something. Kaumar Acharitapar. Gyamati Vedanta Sagamangana Sanapya Chakshunita Vinatasman Sri Guru Vinamaha. So, Prahlad Maharaj requests them, please listen me. The boy told, oh Prahlad, we are quite young. No, no, first. Kumar Acharita Prakthun. This should be translated. My told Kumar Acharita Prakthun. Prahlad was instructing them. Oh, my dear boy. Fear me. From very beginning of childhood. Oh, you should chant and remember Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, please. Chant and remember Supreme Personality Godhead from beginning of your age. I am also telling you all boys and girls, those who are oh, there and they are oh, young boys there, they are not listening. Oh, they are talking oh, mundane talks with their friends. I am watching them. Who are they? <laughs> from here and there. Where is Gopana? Uh, Gopana. 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 Where is Gopana? 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 Where is
Oh, oh you should come here. Thank you. I thank you so much. And your friends should come here. Oh, oh you, 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 you. You, you. Oh, you should come here, very, very near to me. And always you should be here with me. Also, in my room also, you should be observing me. Come on, come on. Inspire all these boys. Oh, oh, instead of you, you are representative of your father. He promised me to come, but your father neither could not. And also, there are some uh, uh, young boys. Oh, I want that they should come to me near a very. Oh, you. Oh, you should all come and here. No. I, Oh, oh, so you should come and hear. Oh, the guards of yesterday guards. <laughs> All guards should come. Oh, yes. Yeah. And please be bodyguard of Guru there. Please come here. Always I want to see you in my closet. Sit down there. I will be very happy. Very, very happy. So, uh, Prahlad Maharaj instructing his friends. Oh, please listen me. Kaumarat acharet pragyo dharman bhagavataniha durlavo manusajanmo tadapadhruvam arthadam Someone must chant and remember the meaning of this. Ita bole tatari. So, Pralodva is attracting. So, from, from the very beginning, or uh, even from age of four or five, all should chant and remember. And remember. Why? Because Durlabho Manuso Janma, the human life is very, very rare. In this world, there are 8.4 million species. Among them, only human lives, only 4 million, 400,000. So, it's very, very rare. And Tadapadhuma Marthadam, and no one can say when death will come for whom. So, uh, by this human being, human life only, we can do bhajan. Other than human life, none can do bhajan. So, please chant and remember Krishna from your beginning of your life. That all that we will be old and then we have enough time to chant and remember. Now we should play. Then he again came. Friends told, Oh Prahlad, why you are so early? Teacher is not here. Let us play. We are quite young. Why will be old? Then we shall chant Krishna name. Don't worry. No, not possible. When you will be old, you could not fix your mind in Krishna consciousness. What to say about Krishna consciousness? If you want to be expert in any art, even if you want to be a very big businessman, or a doctor, or an engineer, you have to start your education from beginning. If you thought, or if any parents thought, oh, I should not send my child in school now, when he will be old, then I shall send him in school. Then his whole life, up to his death, he never be an engineer, or a doctor, or a businessman. Not possible. So if not possible in material life, how possible in spiritual life? If so, anyone is telling that in old days I will chant, remember, then he told that there is no guarantee that he will be old. Even in after a couple of days he may die. Old days never come and he will die. So better to remember and chant from very beginning of life. Don't wait for old days. Also something is there, that if easily the happiness is coming by the impression of past lives, without anything, oh, all sufferings are coming. In, in this way, 
if you have done something good for in your last, last life, oh, this happiness also bound to come. What I told? What I told? Uh, you should understand. Uh, only one word. Gurudev is explaining that the happiness and distress, whatever we face in this our life, is actually predestined because of our previous karmas. So we yeah we cannot make any change in that. If we have no fortune or wealth, and we may endeavor so much, that doesn't make any difference. If it is not written for us, it will never come to us. And on the other side, if there is so much fortune and wealth written for us, it will automatically come without even making any endeavors for it. Yes. Then Prahlad Maharaj told, you know, our age of our human life, hundred. Let's like suppose. Suppose the average age of our human life, hundred years. Among hundred years, we spend our fifty percent of life, means fifty years, by sleeping only. We used to work in daytime and take rest night time. And when a small boy in our childhood, boy says, now is playing in his mother lap and again is sleeping. So all completely all total, we spend our 50 years by sleeping only. So 100 years minus 50 years remain only 50 years. Among these 50 years, from 80 to 100, means 20 years, is useless. You could not do anything at that time. And to whom you brought up, you nourish your child, now your daughter-in-law has come, you have grandchild, then tell, oh, why this old person is not going today? He is coughing all day night, my child could not sleep properly, Always mucus is spitting here and there. He could not sleep in proper place. So better he can die than he will be happy. To whom you nourish, to whom you give birth, they are using the sarcastic word for you. So from 80 to 100 is quite useless. So you could not fix your mind at that time. So one Vaishnav poet has told, Krishna todiya pada pankaja panjarantam adhaiva visatu manasa raja hansa prana prayana samayi kafabata pitkai kantha varadadam vidaste phayanam kutaste Oh Krishna, I want my mind will be fixed in your lotus feet immediate. Why? Because when old age will come, then too much mucus, you could not utter even Krishna nam properly. And at that time, too much pain. So, there is no hope that I can chant your name. So, if I practice from beginning, then at the end of my life, your name must remember in my, come in my mind, then my life will be successful. So, Prahlad Maharaj is telling, we start from beginning. So, 50 years by sleeping, and 20 years is useless due to old age. So, 50 plus 20 is 70, remain on 30. So if you want to an expert in this material world, at least you have to give your 20 years. From your birth to 20 years, then you will be an expert person to maintain your life. So 50 years by sleeping, 20 years is useless due to old age, and 20 years being an expert. So 50 plus 20, 70, plus 20, 90. Only remain 10 years. So when you do bhajan, and among these ten years, you have so many desire, countless desire. I have to marry, I have to make a big business, I have to make so much money, I, have, I want a good wife, I want good kids. So when you do bhajan, so if you begin from your childhood, then you can do bhajan properly. So please listen and do bhajan. They told Prahlad, our Guru, Sanda and Amarka, they never taught all these things. But why are you learning all these things? Then Prahlad Maharaj replied, they are not qualified to teach all these things. I have learned from my Gurudev. Oh, you have learned from your Gurudev. Who is your Gurudev? Prahlad Maharaj replied, 
Narad, this is my Gurudev. Then Prahlad Maharaj narrated the whole story when he was in mother womb. Then demigod, king of demigods Indra want to kill his mother because at that time Hiranyakashipu was in Mandarachal doing some austerity. So Indra invaded the demons and caught him, caught her. At that time he was in his room, in her room. Naradrishi told, Oh Indra, why you are taking this lady? Oh, I don't want to kill him, but he the very powerful son of Hiranyakashipu now at present in her room. When she will give birth, then I shall kill the boy, not to her. Naradrishi replied, You are not able to kill him. None can kill him. He is a good devotee. Hearing this, Indra did Parikrama to my mother and give of her. Then Narad Rishi, being cussless merciful, kept my mother in, her, in his ashram. And Narad Rishi used to give so many instructions. So I learned all this thing from Narad Rishi and due to nature of woman, my mother forget and everything. So, but I remember everything by costless mercy of my Gurudev. So, how to do bhajan? Then Prahlama replied, Guru Susru Saya Bhakta Sarvala Bhara Pane Nacha Sangera Sadhu Bhakta Nam Isra Radha Nacha Listen, Guru Susru Saya Bhakta You have to surrender yourself the lotus feet of a bona fide Gurudev. Moreover, you have to be always in good association. And which you have? You have to surrender everything to Gurudev. Asila Bhaktiva Thakur told, Manasa deha geha jo kichu mor, or pilu tua pade nanda kisor. Which I have, which belongs to me, my body and mind, all everything I am surrendered to yourself. Oh, I have, we have our heart. We have to surrender our heart to Krishna, through bona fide Gurudev, being always good association. Then, what will be the result? Guru Susru Saya Bhakta Sarva Lavan Lavar Pane Nacha Sangera Sadhu Bhakta Nam You have to be always in good association. Then you will be worship for Bhagavan. If you do so, then it is okay. If you not do, then you could not do proper bhajan. So, Prahlad Maharaj is instructing us, we have to be always in good association. If we are in good association, there is no chance of offense. So you have to defense or make offense, not to do any offense. So Prabhupada Maharaj is instructing us all these things. Thank you. So the next thing we shall listen from Guru Dev. Hare Krishna. Panchaka Bhattari Bhaskar Kipas in the Bhaya Vacha. Pritaran Prabhupada. Hatha Desh, all boys become very attached to Pranam. Prahlad Maharaj told, oh, you should repeat me. And Prahlad Maharaj was doing, oh, stand up. Jai Jai Radha Raman Hari Go. 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 Oh, what from where this sound is coming? <laughs> and he came running with his club, club and sword. He came and he stopped this nonsense <laughs> and became very furious. And he began to oh, chastise the, his son, but he useless. He could not do anything. In the meantime, he told. What he told? From where you are taking this energy, and why you are so strong? So now, Hiranyakashipu was that very, very angry, huh? and he began to. 
<laughs> he was so angry and he approached this small boy. Oh, don't you know who I am? I am so powerful. All the demigods everywhere, they're all afraid of me. They're all falling at my feet and they're offering prayers to me. Everyone is afraid of me. But you are not afraid of me. From where do you get your strength? So then Prahlad Maharaj, without any fear at all, he said, Oh, my strength, your strength, and everyone's strength, it all comes from the same place. From Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Oh, then Tirani Kashpur became more angry. Why are you always talking about a powerful person, a Supreme Lord, other than myself? I am the controller of everything. Why are you always talking about someone greater than me? Mm -hmm. So, if there is a, such a Vishnu, oh, I would like to see him now. When I take my sword and I separate your head from your body. Where is your, your Lord? Pallad Maharaj said, Oh, my Lord, He is everywhere. In all places, inside and out. Hirani Kasipu said, in your heart. Happy. Oh, he's everywhere. Does that mean that he's in this pillar? And he indicated one stone pillar very close by. Prahlad Maharaj, he looked at the pillar. And he has transcendental vision. He could see. Oh yes, my Lord is there. His Lord is there. Wait a He said, oh, well let us see your Lord protect you, protect you now. And he began to curse Prahlad Maharaj with so many harsh words. Just then, out of anger, he took his fist. And only with his fist, he punched the pillar. And the pillar cracked. Oh, nothing happened. Then he turned to Prahlad Maharaj, and he began to curse him, and he was about to kill him. But just then, from within the stone pillar, came a very tremendous sound. At that very moment, everyone was wondering, where is that sound coming from? All over the universe, so many demigods, even elephants in the jungle, they started to cry and run in fear, all over the universe. And Hirani Kashmir was looking here and there, where did that sound come from? Where did that sound come from? And then he looked at the stone pillar, and an amazing creature burst out from the stone. It was not a human being, and not an animal. His body was like a human being, with many, many arms and celestial weapons. And his head was like a, like a lion. Hirani Kaspu was looking towards this creature and thinking, what kind of creature is this? From where did he come? But then he realized, oh, I have a benediction from Brahma. So whoever he is, whatever he is, wherever he came from, I can kill him. He cannot kill me. So then Hirani Kaspu, taking his sword and club, he immediately ran at that creature, whoever it was, just like a small moth goes directly into blazing fire. A fight ensued. Sometimes... Can you push it down? Oh my God. <laughs> any, any so, sometimes they were fighting and Lord Nishingadev would catch this Hirani Kashipu just like Guruda catches a, a serpent in his beak. At that time, all the demigods who had been kicked out of their homes and were suffering so much, they were saying, Jai! Jai! But then at the next moment, when Hirani Kashmir would slip out from the grip of Lord Nishingadev, then all the demigods would be, oh. And they would be very much afraid, and they would call out, Quickly! Kill him! Kill him! Quickly! In this way, Lord Nisingadev was enjoying the great uh, mellows of a very good fight, sometimes catching him and sometimes letting him go. And all the demigods were perturbed. But just then, the time came when the sun was setting. It was neither the day or the night. He was not outside or inside, but on the threshold of the house. It was not in any year or month. It was in a leap year. It was not on the earth or in the sky. But he caught Hirani Kashipu and kept him on his lap. And then not with any weapons, only using his nails. 
He burst open the abdomen of Hiranyakashipu. 